What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully, having a great day. In today's episode of Learning Roblox Studio, we are going to be going over the Interactive Buns course. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make in my other videos. There's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check that out as well. With that being said, let's get into it. So, Interactive Buns. In creating a score bar, which is the last episode, you built a basic GUI to display information. In this course, you'll learn how to make on-screen buns that can be used for menus, interface actions, and more. And we can see in the image that at the bottom right-hand corner, there are a couple of different buns. We've got the sword, the diamond, and a map-looking button. Button types. There are two types of button objects that can be used in your GUI design. There's a text button which is on the left, and the text button is similar to a text label, except that the player can activate it with a click or a tap. It also shares many of the same visual properties, such as font, background color, stroke color, and more. And on the right, we can see a couple of image buns. An image button is like an interactive version of the image label object. It also shares most of the same properties as its non-button counterpart, similar to how the text button shares properties with the text label. Creating a button. Following steps show how to add an image button to the screen and flip it between three appearances depending on the player's interaction. So let's go ahead and fire up Studio, and as always, I open the game that we've been working on this entire time. You can open up any project or create a brand new one, depending on whatever you want to do. And with that being said, let's go over to the start GUI and add in a brand new screen GUI. And since I already do have a a screen GUI in here, which is actually for the score bar. I'm going to rename this one to score bar, which is the one that we've already had in here. And the new one I'm going to rename to buttons. So now inside of the buttons GUI or the screen GUI, you guys don't need to rename it. We are going to add in an image button. And we can see that it's been added at the top left hand corner of our screen. And we are going to rename this to map button size. For the button to dynamically resize on various devices and screens, it's best to use the scale property. So inside of the map button properties, we are going to search for size and then we we can expand this out and then we can see X and Y and we can expand both of those out as well. Now by default, the size is actually set by the offset and we want to set the scale so that this will automatically scale to all devices. And what I mean by that is if we look at it right now, it's 100 by 100 and we can see it's pretty small in the top left corner of the screen. But if we say swap to a mobile view, we can see that it becomes very large compared to how it looks on our default screen. So that's why we want to use scale. So for both the X and the Y, we want to set the scale to 0.15. And then of course we want to set the offset to zero as well. The scale has been set for both X and Y to 0.15 and the offset has been set to zero. Now, if we look over at mobile, it's pretty much the exact same size as it is on our normal view. It's not way bigger like it was previously. Additionally, we wanna change the size constraint to relative YY and we can see it's been made much smaller. Scaling. The current size should work nicely on a phone, but the X slash Y scale of 0.15, which is actually 15% of the actual screen, may appear too large on a computer screen. To correct this, you can add a UI size constraint. So inside of the map button, we're going to add a UI size constraint and we're going to set the max size property of the size constraint to 90 comma 90. And now we can see it's also been made much smaller as well on our bigger screen. So we click on mobile and we can see it's pretty much the exact same size as it looks on our big screen. Position. Bun should typically be moved within the player's thumb reach on mobile devices. For instance, the lower right area of the screen. We now want to change the map button's anchor point to 0.5 comma 1 so that the positioning will be based around the bottom center point. Then we want to expand the button's position. So let's go inside of the position and expand both of these. So we want to set the scale of X to 1 and the offset to negative 150. And then for the Y, we want to set the scale to 1 once again, and we want to set the offset to negative 20. And we can now see the button is positioned at the bottom right hand corner of our screen. And if we look on mobile, we can see it doesn't look like it's so far in the bottom right corner of our screen. And that's kind of good because that seems where the default jump button seems to go on Roblox mobile. Images. This button needs three custom images is normal appearance on the screen, a hover over appearance, and a final image when the player presses it. We can see the three different images right there, so the normal is sort of just a normal blue, the hover is a little bit lighter, and the pressed is almost a whole different color. Setting these appearances can be done through the image, hover image, and pressed image properties. So let's go back inside of our bun, and then we have a couple of IDs which we need to set for a couple of the properties, so I'll have these in the description for you guys to use. So we're going to want to modify the image with this ID, then the hover image we want to set to this ID, and and then the pressed image we want to set to another ID as well, and there we go. Styling. To finalize the button's appearance on screen, make the following adjustments. We want to set the background transparency to 1 so that we don't see the background. We want to rotate the button slightly, so let's look up rotate, and we want to set that to negative 5, so now it's slightly tilted. Button functionality. The final task is hooking up a basic button functionality. In the explore window, hover over the map button object and insert a local script. So let's go ahead and insert a local script into this button. In the script, copy and paste in the new lines. So rather than doing that, I'm I'm going to 
go over the code real quick and we'll make it ourselves. We want to make a variable called button and we want to set that to script.parent. And remember, script.parent refers to map button because our local script is the script and its parent is the map button. Then once we do that, we are going to create a new function called on button activated that's going to have no parameters and all we're going to do is print out button activated and then we want to connect the button to that function so we're going to say button dot mouse button one click dot activated colon connect and then we want to provide that function so there we go now the button is connected with the function so i just went through this with you but i'm also going to read their explanation of how the script is set up so the simple button script works as follows the first line sets the variable which tells the script what specific object it's linked to in this case it's linked to the image button the parent of the script then the on button activated function handles the button's activation inside of it you should perform the intended action like opening the game's menu and then the final line connects the button to the on button activated function with the activated event this will cause the function to run every time a player activates the button in game although there are several different events which you can connect to buttons the activated event is the most reliable for basic buttons providing standard button behavior on all platforms from pc to phone slash tablet and console now i want to talk about that real quick they talk about the activated event and if we look at the documentation for this it'll actually give us two different pieces of information the input object and the click count so when we use this event we can see how many times it was clicked and we can also see an input object now if you're unfamiliar with what an input object directly is an input object represents a single user input such as a mouse movement touches key presses and more so pretty much we can figure out what keys a user pressed or maybe they're using a controller or other things so basically the activated event gives us additional information which other events such as mouse button one click doesn't and you might be wondering why am i bringing up mouse button one click well i would say that mouse button one click is probably the most commonly used event when working with GUIs. And I think the reason for that is just because when everybody learned how to use GUIs, mouse button one click has always been the way that people learn to actually track if someone clicks on their button. Additionally, if this is maybe your first time working with mouse button one click, you might think based on the name mouse button one click that this would actually only work for a mouse button. And that's actually not true. This will work on all platforms, at least it has so far. So on mobile, if you still have a GUI set up rather than using activated and you use mouse button one click the event will still be fired if the player taps on their screen and doesn't actually use a mouse mouse button one click is certainly cross-platform although the page itself doesn't seem to mention that at all which is pretty weird it is 100 cross-platform now i'm also not encouraging you to use mouse button one click because it seems like roblox themselves are recommending you use activated over the other properties such as mouse button one click but i'm just saying that if you guys have used mouse button one click and you might be nervous or not too sure about this issue that we just went over i just want to clarify some of that information so yes i would still definitely recommend using activated with that being said ladies and gentlemen that's gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys did enjoy and hopefully it did help you guys out if it did make sure you guys smash the like button also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when i upload more roblox development content of course i do have a patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make my other videos there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go check it out with that being said i hope that you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next episode